I go skinny dipping with all my boyfriends, but then I lose interest in them. Every skinny dip under the moon's glow hides a secret in its reflection. Beneath the lake's depths, intimate tales of love and loss await. Journey with me through shimmering waters and darkened ripples as I bear both body and soul. Dive deep into a world where passion meets pain and discover the heart-wrenching tales these moonlit waters have silently witnessed. This is all six chapters of a six-part short story. Chapter 1. Drenched Desires. My Secret Skinny Dipping Ritual. Imagine every time the cool embrace of moonlit water caressed my naked skin, another heart shatters. An irresistible dance of desire, secrets, and inevitable parting. Join me as I confess the seductive allure of the lake and the tales of hearts I've unintentionally broken. Chapter 1 Rain taps against my window pane, and in its rhythm, I find a distraction from my own spiralling thoughts. The cadence of drops, the muted hum of the city below, they all form a backdrop to the reel of memories playing in my mind. Leo, with his impish grin and hazel eyes, becomes the star of this uninvited recollection. We had something special, Leo and I. He brought colour to my grayscale life, literally and figuratively. His paintings, the ones with bold strokes and vibrant hues, often mirrored the way he lived, with passion and an insatiable zest. He often spoke about capturing the essence of moments, and how every shade, every line told a story. Our story, too, had its colours. From the pastel shades of our first dates to the fiery reds of our occasional spats, it was a canvas of emotions. But the lake evening was different. It was a shade I can't quite name. A mix of midnight blues, silvery moonlight, and an ethereal glow. It was a moment suspended in time where promises felt eternal, and the night stretched endlessly before us. But like all ethereal moments, it was fleeting, and as dawn approached, the magic started to wear off. The insecurities, the shadows from a time gone by, began to cloud my vision. And Leo, the artist who could discern shades with astounding precision, failed to see the change in me. Before Leo, there was Peter, a stark contrast, but equally captivating in his own right. Where Leo's canvas was wild, Peter's was methodical. Every thought, every word was deliberate. He had a penchant for the profound, often quoting obscure poets and philosophers in everyday conversations. Our late night was unlike any other. It was filled with words, profound discussions, deep dives into the mysteries of life and existence. But as with Leo, the morning after was different. The depth of our discussions couldn't hold back the tidal wave of detachment that surged within me. The lake. That's where it all pivots, doesn't it? The ritual of visiting, of immersing and emerging. Some find it poetic, others quirky. But for me, it's a test. A trial I put myself through almost masochistically. Every splash, every ripple feels like a question directed at me. Questions I'm yet to find answers to. Questions about that one evening, the one that started it all. The evening where the lake was not a silent spectator, but an active participant in my life's drama. Every relationship, every connection since then, has been an attempt to drown that evening's memories, to replace them with newer, happier ones. But like a stubborn stain, it refuses to go. The lake's waters, instead of washing away the memories, magnify them, making them more potent, more painful. I wish I could articulate all this to Leo, Peter and all the others, but how does one put into words a sensation that's felt deep within? How do you explain the void, the abyss that threatens to swallow you whole? For now the lake remains my confidant, the only entity that knows the full story. And as much as I want to stay away, I find myself gravitating towards it, drawn by a force I can neither name nor resist. This is chapter one of a six-part short story. The next chapter is chapter two. Sultry secrets. Every time I go skinny dipping, I break a heart. Each night, the lake becomes a mirror, 
reflecting not just stars but memories. Some glisten with joy, others hide in the shadows of pain. Tonight, I dive deep into a particular evening, an enchanting tale filled with passion, promises, and a twist that forever altered my path. Chapter 2 Sometimes I wonder if the city, with its relentless hustle and its ever-changing skyline, is just a reflection of our inner chaos. It's a thought that strikes me often as I walk its streets, seeking solace in its anonymity. And that's what I was doing after Leo left, wandering aimlessly, letting the city's cacophony drown my own internal turmoil. But no matter where I went, the memories followed, not just of Leo or Peter, but of Tom. Tom, with his sun-kissed skin and infectious laughter, the first to introduce me to the thrill of the lake. Those were simpler times, days filled with unbridled joy and reckless abandon. We were young, wildly in love, convinced that the world was ours for the taking. It was with Tom that I first experienced the serenity of the lake under a blanket of stars. We had sneaked out past curfew, driven down winding roads with the radio playing our favourite tunes, and found our secret spot. There, with the water lapping at our feet and the universe above, we'd made promises, vows of forever. The lake was our witness, our silent companion. It was magical, ethereal, until it wasn't. The morning after changed everything. A simple misstep, a moment's distraction, and suddenly the world as I knew it was ripped apart. The weight of that morning's events, the guilt, the grief, they threatened to pull me under, deeper and deeper, into an abyss of darkness. I've tried to move on, to find semblance in new relationships, to recreate that magic. But every time I return to the lake with someone new, I'm hoping, praying that it offers redemption, that the waters which once took away so much give something back. With Leo, I hoped to find a reprieve in his artistic passion. With Peter, I sought depth, hoping his intellectual pursuits would anchor me. But each relationship, though filled with moments of genuine connection, was ultimately overshadowed by the spectre of that tragic day with Tom. The lake, once a haven, became a constant reminder of that loss. Yet I couldn't stay away. With each visit, I'd hoped to leave behind a piece of that pain, to find healing. But the waters, instead of cleansing, seemed to amplify the ache, turning it into an ever-present, throbbing reminder of what was lost. Every ripple, every reflection seemed to echo Tom's laughter, his voice, our shared dreams. And as much as I tried to suppress it, to lock it away in the deepest corners of my heart, it always found its way back, more potent, more visceral. I wonder if I'll ever find peace, if the lake will ever be just a lake again. But until then, it remains my tormentor and my solace, a place of pain and hope. And as I navigate the complexities of new relationships, it stands as a heartbreaking reminder to that one fateful day, a day that changed everything. This is chapter two of a six part short story. The next chapter is chapter three. Skinny dipping with James, my body exposed. But my soul is hidden. The water holds my confessions, silent witness to my moonlit trysts. Each splash a tortured memory, each ripple a story of love found and then lost. Tonight, Listen as the liquid expanse narrates another tale, an intimate dance beneath the stars, echoing with desire, commitment and the pang of heartbreak. Chapter 3 Sunsets are a peculiar thing. They're endings, a closing of chapters, yet they hold a certain magic that beginnings often lack. Sitting at my favourite cafe, Watching the world draped in hues of amber and crimson, my mind drifts to James. James, with his rugged charm and effortless confidence, was different from the rest. Not an artist like Leo or a philosopher like Peter. 
No, James was a pragmatist, a man rooted in the present. I met him during one of my aimless city wanderings in a quaint bookstore nestled between towering skyscrapers. He was engrossed in a novel, so much so that he didn't notice when he knocked over a stack of books. Our laughter, as we scrambled to pick them up, broke the silence of the store and marked the beginning of our tale. In James, I found an unexpected ally, a listener. Our dates were simple, coffee sessions that turned into hours of conversations. For the first time in ages, I felt understood. Without the weight of past judgments, I could be myself, unfiltered, unguarded. It wasn't long before the lake beckoned. A part of me resisted wanting to protect this newfound bond from the shadows of my past. But another part, that ever-persistent voice, whispered promises of redemption. Maybe, just maybe, this time would be different. The day arrived with clear skies and a gentle breeze. The lake mirrored the heavens, a vast expanse of azure. Together we ventured into its embrace and for a brief moment I felt free. The burdens of the past seemed distant and hope, fragile as it was, began to bloom. But as night gave way to dawn, the familiar unease crept in. Every glance James threw my way, every touch felt like an accusation. The lake's whispers grew louder, pulling me back into the vortex of grief and guilt. And just like that, the promise of a new beginning shattered. In the following days, I distanced myself, retreating into the protective walls I'd built over the years. James tried, God knows he did. He sensed the change, the shift in our dynamic and sought answers. But how could I explain a pain so profound, a wound still raw and bleeding? So I did what I knew best, I ran, leaving behind yet another soul bewildered and hurt. Now, as I sit here watching the sun dip below the horizon, I wonder about the whys. Why did the lake hold such power over me? Why couldn't I break free from its chains? And most importantly, why did every relationship, every glimpse of happiness, lead back to its shores? In the cacophony of the bustling cafe, amidst the laughter and murmurs, I hear James's voice, a lingering echo, a reminder of yet another missed opportunity, another what could have been. And as darkness engulfs the city, I realise that maybe, just maybe, the answers I seek aren't out there. Perhaps they lie within, in the recesses of my heart, waiting to be discovered. This is chapter three of a six-part short story. The next chapter is chapter four. Skinny Dipping With Mark a mixture of excitement and dread. The forbidden has its allure, doesn't it? A pull too strong to resist, especially when whispered by the deceptive serenity of the lake. Tonight I share a chapter drenched in temptation, a tale of love, longing and a betrayal so profound, even the ever-watchful waters couldn't have predicted. Chapter 4 Time, they say, heals all wounds. But what they often forget to mention is how it has this uncanny knack of dredging up memories long forgotten. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the city became my cocoon, shielding me from the piercing prying of my own conscience. But even in its vast expanse, in its crowded streets and noisy cafes, I found solitude, a solitude that weighed heavily upon me. Enter Mark a vivacious charmer with a razor-sharp wit. Our meeting was nothing short of cinematic, a chance encounter during a rainy evening when he offered his umbrella, as I was caught unprepared. We walked side by side, sharing stories, getting drenched, and laughing at the world and its little ironies. With Mark, everything was light and breezy. He was the polar opposite of James, and a welcome respite from the intensity of my past relationships. We danced through the streets of the city, explored hidden alleyways, and tried out every gelato stand we could find. His laughter was infectious and his optimism unwavering. However, 
As with all things in my life, the lake loomed large, casting its shadow over the happiness I had found. Every joyous moment was tinged with the knowledge that soon, I'd have to face my demons again. And I did wonder often if Mark would be the one to finally break the cycle, to pull me out from the quagmire of my past. It was during a particularly hot summer evening that I broached the subject. The city was alive with festivities, and amidst the glow of fairy lights and the gentle strumming of a distant guitar, I told Mark about the lake, or at least parts of it. I spoke of its beauty, its serenity, and how it had played a pivotal role in all my relationships. What I didn't tell him was about the shadows it hid, the whispers it carried, and the heartbreak it had witnessed. Mark, ever the adventurer, was intrigued. A weekend getaway was planned, and as we packed our bags I couldn't help but feel a mixture of excitement and dread. The familiar road to the lake seemed longer this time, each mile echoing the tumult of emotions within me. The day at the lake started off beautifully. We picnicked, played silly games, and as the sun began its descent, Mark suggested we take the plunge. Hand in hand, we ventured into the cool waters, and for a moment, everything felt perfect. But as darkness set in, the lake began its haunting serenade. Memories of Tom, the weight of lost relationships, the guilt of walking away from James all converged, threatening to drown me. Mark, sensing my distress, tried to pull me back to the shore, but the more he tugged, the deeper I sank into the abyss of my past. That night, under the starlit sky, I finally bared my soul. I spoke of Tom, of the tragedy, of the heavy burden of guilt and grief. Mark listened, his face a canvas of emotions, shock, sympathy, understanding. But when dawn broke and the first rays of the sun hit the shimmering waters, I knew. Knew that the lake had claimed another victim, another relationship. Mark, try as he might, couldn't fathom the depth of my pain, the chains that bound me to that place. As we drove back to the city, a silence hung between us, a silence that spoke volumes. And I realized yet again that the lake with its shadows and whispers continued to hold sway over my life. This is chapter four of a six part short story. The next chapter is chapter five. Skinny dipping with Alex in the murky waters of my past, my present and maybe my future. The dance of the waves, the secretive sighs of the shore and the intertwined fates of two lovers. Tonight, the waters are more restless, eager to share a poignant love story filled with hopes, dreams and the cruel twists of destiny. Let the liquid embrace guide us through another midnight tale. Chapter 5 In the heart of the city where sounds never sleep and lights never dim, I tried once again to drown out the ever-present echoes of the lake. Cafes became my sanctuaries, libraries my hideaways and music my escape. Yet the tranquility I sought remained elusive, slipping through my fingers like grains of sand. One evening as winter's chill began to grip the city I met Alex. We were introduced by mutual friends at a poetry reading event. Alex, with his deep set eyes and thoughtful demeanor was an old soul. He wrote verses that spoke of pain and loss, of love and longing. Our bond was almost instantaneous. Our conversations were endless, stretching into the small hours. They were a blend of debates, shared stories and quiet moments of understanding. We recited poetry, critiqued novels and occasionally delved into personal histories. It was during one such night that Alex recounted his own tale of heartbreak. He spoke of a love lost of moments cherished and of the struggle to move on. I saw in him a reflection of my own torments, and for the first time I felt the urge to reveal the entirety of my tale, to open the doors of my past wide and let another soul in. 
Over candlelit dinners and amidst soft piano tunes, I began unravelling my story for Alex. The childhood visits to the lake, the innocent joys it once held, and the fateful evening with Tom that forever marred its beauty. The subsequent relationships, each ending at the lake's edge, and the guilt that held me prisoner. Alex listened intently, his expressions shifting from surprise to empathy. When I finished, he held my hand, offering silent solidarity. And in that moment, I felt a connection, a bond that went beyond fleeting attractions and shared interests. We decided to confront the lake together, to face the demons, to seek closure, and perhaps to find a way forward. The journey back to that haunting place was filled with trepidation, but having Alex by my side offered a glimmer of hope. Upon reaching, the lake seemed different. Maybe it was the winter's touch or perhaps the presence of Alex, but it felt less foreboding. As we sat on its banks, wrapped in blankets, I began recounting my memories with each boyfriend, the joy, the anticipation, the eventual heartbreak. Alex, in turn, shared his tales, his experiences and his journey of self-discovery. Hours turned into days. We camped, cooked, laughed and cried. The lake, once a symbol of my anguish, began transforming. With Alex's help, I started seeing it not as a place of pain, but as a testament to my resilience. However, as our time there drew to a close, a cloud of uncertainty loomed. Would our bond withstand the test of time, or would it too fall victim to the lake's curse? The answer was unclear, but what was evident was that for the first time, I had not only shared the entirety of my story, but had also found someone willing to walk beside me as we navigated the murky waters of the past. This is chapter five of a six part short story. The next chapter is the final chapter, chapter six, skinny dipping climax but I had to do it alone all tales lead to a climax a moment of raw truth and piercing clarity as dawn paints the horizon with its gentle hues I stand ready poised at the precipice of revelation join me as I unveil the heart of my skinny dipping saga the core truth that shaped every moonlit dip. Chapter 6 In the ensuing weeks, the city took on a different hue. Its vibrant streets and bustling cafes seemed to mirror the newfound clarity in my heart. The weight of years, which had felt like a millstone around my neck, felt slightly lighter. But clarity, as I was beginning to realise, also came with its own set of challenges. And atop that list was facing the past and seeking redemption. It was clear to me that the lake, in all its serene beauty and haunting memories, was a crucible. I had to face it, not just with Alex, but by myself, and come to terms with the tragedy that had defined so much of my life. One evening, after days of contemplation, I decided to go back to the lake alone. This was a pilgrimage I needed to undertake solo. Alex, ever understanding, simply held me close before I left, whispering, whatever you're seeking, I hope you find it. The journey back was filled with a myriad of emotions, apprehension, hope, fear, and longing. Each mile covered brought forth a cascade of memories. I recalled the innocence of youth, the warmth of Tom's touch, the anguish of loss, and the subsequent years of seeking solace in fleeting relationships. Reaching the lake, its vast expanse looked back at me, its waters calm yet deep, mirroring my own state of mind. I settled down at our usual spot, the same spot where I had recounted so many tales, where I had laughed and cried, and where I had seen relationships blossom and wither. The stillness was palpable, interrupted only by the soft rustling of leaves and the distant call of a nightingale. As the sun began to set, painting the sky in hues of orange and purple, I felt an overwhelming urge to plunge into the waters, to immerse myself in its depths, to confront my deepest fears, and perhaps to seek forgiveness from Tom. 
With hesitant steps, I approached the water's edge. The initial touch was cold, sending shivers down my spine. But as I waded further in, it felt strangely comforting. The lake, in all its vastness, seemed to be embracing me, drawing me into its fold. As I swam deeper, memories came flooding back. The joyous days of youth, the fateful evening, the sound of Tom's laughter, and the echoing silence that followed his loss. It was as if the waters were replaying the tape of my life, making me confront each moment, each decision, each tear shed and each laughter shared. Time seemed to stand still. I felt like I was floating, caught between the realms of reality and memories, and then, in that profound silence, I heard a voice, soft, distant, but unmistakably familiar. Tom. His voice wasn't one of blame or anguish. Instead, it was filled with love and understanding. He spoke of the days gone by, of the love we shared, and of the life he wished for me. A life filled with happiness, devoid of guilt and free from the chains of the past. His message was clear. It was time to let go. Emerging from the waters, I felt reborn. The weight that had held me down for years seemed to have dissolved, replaced by a newfound sense of purpose and clarity. The lake, which had been a symbol of my deepest sorrows, had now become a beacon of hope. As I sat on its banks, drenched but elated, I realized that the journey to redemption often requires confronting our deepest fears and seeking forgiveness, not just from others, but from ourselves. I stayed there for hours, watching the stars shimmer on the lake's surface feeling an inexplicable connection with the universe and everything in it. The night was no longer foreboding but comforting, like a soft blanket wrapped around a weary traveller. With dawn breaking, I decided it was time to head back. The city awaited, as did Alex, and a life that I was now ready to live to the fullest. The road back seemed different, brighter, filled with possibilities, and as the first rays of the sun kissed the horizon, I knew that a new chapter was about to begin. As I re-entered the city, it greeted me like an old friend. Streets that once seemed filled with shadows now gleamed with possibility. Every corner, every alley, every bustling cafe held a promise of new beginnings. My heart felt lighter, unburdened by the years of sorrow and guilt that had weighed it down. But with newfound clarity came new questions, the most pressing of which was, what now? While the chains of the past no longer held me, I realized the future was an open book, waiting to be written, and at the forefront of that future was Alex. Returning home, I found him waiting, a look of concern replaced by relief when he saw me. Without a word, we embraced, the warmth of his touch a testament to the bond we shared, Breaking the silence, I recounted my journey back to the lake, the immersion in its depths, the voice of Tom, and the catharsis that followed. Alex listened, holding my hand, every nod, every expression conveying understanding. When I finished, he whispered, I'm proud of you, Clara. It takes courage to face the past, but it takes even more to embrace the future. The subsequent days were a whirlwind of emotions, Together, Alex and I explored the city, revisiting old haunts, discovering new ones, and creating a tapestry of memories. But beyond the shared experiences, there was a deep introspection. We both recognized the transient nature of life and the importance of cherishing each moment. One evening, as we sat on my apartment's balcony, overlooking the city's skyline, Alex broached the subject of the future. Clara, he began, we've shared stories, pains, joys and more, but what does the future hold for us? I took a deep breath. Alex, the lake taught me many things, among them the fact that we can't predict the future. All we can do is live in the present, cherish it and hope for a brighter tomorrow. He nodded. I agree. But there's something else I've been thinking about, a future where we're together, not bound by the past or its shadows. A future where we face challenges hand in hand. The implication was clear. Alex was talking about a deeper commitment, a shared life. I looked into his eyes, searching for answers, 
finding only love and hope. Are you suggesting? He smiled. A life together, Clara. A life where we cherish each moment, stand by each other through thick and thin, and build a future on the foundation of love and trust. It was a lot to take in. But as I pondered over it, I realized that life's beauty lay in its unpredictability. In the chances we take, in the leaps of faith, in the shared dreams. And with Alex, I felt a connection, a bond that went beyond mere companionship. Taking his hand, I whispered, yes, Alex, let's embrace tomorrow, together. The city lights shimmered in the distance, the night silence punctuated by the distant hum of traffic and the soft whispers of two souls intertwined. And as the first light of dawn painted the horizon, a new chapter in Clara's life began, one filled with hope, love and endless possibilities. Thank you for listening to this true life story of love, betrayal and heartache. If you like this story and would like to hear more stories of love, betrayal, cheating and candid confessions like this one, please make sure you subscribe to The Romance Diaries on YouTube. And don't forget to show us some love by hitting the like button.